Now I like to compare the sizes of different types of fractions. If we have something that looks like this, 5 eighths, and I want to compare that with 3 eighths, well that's actually pretty easy. Obviously 5 eighths is more than 3 eighths because visually you can see it, 5 slices out of 8 is much larger than if you remove two of them and have 3 eighths. But now, what about something like this? 2 thirds with 3 fifths. I mean, yeah, you can break out some pizza slices and do, do some comparison, but what if we have some fractions that don't have a matching pizza fractions or some of these fraction circles? So we need to find a systematic way of doing this. Another way to think about it is that with the eighths, it was easy to compare. It's like saying, you know, apples with apples. But with different denominators, you're trying to compare apples with oranges, and that just won't do. So now let's find a mathematical way of comparing the sizes of these fractions. Well, the method we're going to use is try to find a higher form of our two fractions such that they have the same denominator. Well, between 3 and 5, I'm going to try, I guess, maybe 15 is a good denominator. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to change each one of these into a higher form. And I did that over here. Now, once you do this, it's easy to compare 10 fifteenths to 9 fifteenths. 10 fifteenths is obviously bigger than 9 fifteenths. So because 10 fifteenths is the same as 2 thirds, 2 thirds must be larger than 3 fifths. So to answer this question, I can say 2 thirds is greater than 3 fifths. Now, I don't have to use just 15. Any multiple that is common for 5 and 3 would work. 15, 30, 45, and so on. But for simplicity, you want to try to find the smallest multiple that has both of these in common. The least or lowest common denominator, or LCD, is the least common multiple, the LCM, of the denominators of two or more fractions. It is the smallest number that all the denominators will divide into. So if we want to compare two fractions, all you need to do is rewrite them in higher form using their LCD, lowest common denominator, or least common denominator. Example 7 asks us to find the LCD for a quarter and one sixth. First, let's write down the denominators. So I have 4 and 6. I'm going to use factor trees to help us with this. So 4 can be factored 2 times 2, 6 can be factored 2 times 3. Now I'm going to do what's called, what I like to call the column approach. So I'm going to write down 2 times 2, and then below I write down in column form factors of 6. I need to make sure the right numbers are underneath the right numbers. So the 2 can go underneath any one of these 2's, and the 3 cannot be lined up with one of these, so I put it separately. And then I kind of create these columns like this. So my answer is going to be 2 times 2 times 3, which gives me 12. And that's going to be the LCM, which is also the LCD. Example 8 asks, which of these two fractions is smaller, 2 thirds or 11 sixteenths? Well, let's find the LCM, which will give us the LCD. 3 is prime, so 3 is going to be part of the answer. 16, I can actually break that up into 4 times 4, and then 2 times 2, 2 times 2. So let's multiply all these together because they, they don't have anything in common. So it's going to be 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 again. Put that all together, figure it out, and you're going to get 48. Now the next step is to create a higher form of these two fractions so you can make your comparisons. In other words, you want to get a common denominator. So for 2 thirds, that's the same as saying 2, there's a 3, times something. And see, I want to get the 48. Well, it already has the 3, which is already here. So I'm missing this part, which is 16. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 16. That's going to give us 
32. Let's do the same thing with the other fraction. 11 16th is going to be 11 times something, 16 times something, and I want my result to have a denominator of 48. So 16 is all these numbers, so it's just missing the 3 to get the 48. Aha! So that's how I get that number. 11 times 3 is going to be 33. Now compare these two. Well, see, now it's easy. We have apples with apples. 32 is smaller than 33, therefore, 2 thirds is smaller than 11 sixteenths. If you want to quickly determine whether two fractions are equivalent, let's say A over B, is it the same? Is it equivalent to C over D? There's a very fast way of doing that. This is what you do you would multiply A times D and compare that with the multiplications of B times C. In other words, see, look what we're doing. We're cross multiplying. So here's what the result's going to look like. A times D, is that the same, question mark, as B times C? Well, if they are the same, then yes, you can say the fractions are equivalent. And if they're not the same, well, then you say they're not equivalent. So now let's try this with our previous problem. So now I'd like to figure out if 2 thirds is equivalent to 11 16th. Well, we already know the answer is no, but let's officially prove it. So we'll do our little cross multiplication things. 2 times 16, is that the same as 3 times 11? Well, 2 times 16 is 32. Is that the same, question mark, find out, of the multiplication of 3 times 11, which is going to be 33? Well, no. So therefore, no, they're not equivalent. Many standardized tests ask questions where you have to compare the sizes of different fractions. What we want to do now is look at some patterns where you observe carefully how the denominator is changing or not changing, and then also look at the numerators, how they change or not change. Let's take a look at that next. Pattern number one. Let's look at how the shaded region would change if we leave the numerators the same but increase the size of the denominators. For example, here's a half. Now let's put in a third, and a quarter, a fifth, and a sixth. So what's the pattern? If the numerator stays the same, as the denominator gets larger and larger and larger, the actual value of the fraction gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Pattern number two, let's keep the denominators the same and increase the size of the numerators. So let's start off with one sixth, then two sixths, three sixths, four sixths, and finally five sixths. So for this pattern, if the denominators stay the same, the value of the fraction actually gets larger as the numerator gets larger. So now let's put this information we just learned about those patterns to practice. Which one of these two fractions is larger? Well, the rule is if the numerators are the same, the fraction with the larger denominator is actually getting smaller. The bigger the denominator, the smaller the value. This is pattern number one. So in this case, 3 7 is larger. Now over here, the denominators are the same. It's like saying the same cuts of slices of pizza. So here we have more slices than over here. So this is pattern number two. So the answer is 7 11 is larger. Which fraction is larger, 5 6 or 8 9 well, I can't use any of those patterns because I don't have matching denominators or matching numerators. So what do we do? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Just find the least common denominator. We know how to do that, don't we? So we have 6 and 9. Let's do the factor trees. 6 is 2 times 3. 9 is 3 times 3. So we have 2 times 3. And then we're going to line up with the columns, the 3 from the 9 here. And then I can't put this 3 below here, so I'll put it to the side. So it's going to be 2 times 3 
times 3, which gives us 18. So now we want to get that as my common denominator. So for here, I'm going to extend the denominators. I say now my goal is to get 18. I'm going to do that for both of them. So I want 18 and my denominator is 6. So I have to times this by 3. But what you do to the bottom, you got to do to the top. So I'm going to get 15. Over here, I have 9 times what is 18? Times 2. 8 times 2 is 16. So now we have the same denominators. And the question is, well, which one is larger? Well, 16 18 is larger than 15 18. Therefore, we can say that 8 9 is larger. For exercise 13, I'd like you to find the LCD between 3 8 and 5 12. Let's start off doing the factor trees. 8 is really 2 times 4, and then I can break down the 4 as 2 times 2. 12 is 3 times 4, and then the 4 can be broken down 2 times 2. Let's create the columns. We have 2 times 2 times 2 from this group, and then over here I have 2 times 2. Oh, I can't put the 3 here, so I'll put it to one side. So I'm going to get 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, and this gives us an answer of 24. For exercise 14, I'd like you to find the LCD between 4 6 and 8 24. And hint, hint, this one can be a little sneaky. So there's actually a very slick way of doing this. I want you to give it a try first. Now, to answer this, you can do what we did on the previous problem. Do the factor trees, do the column approach, get the answer. But notice, these are not in a reduced form to begin with. So let's actually take care of that. For the first fraction, it's even top and bottom, so I can just cut everything in half. So I'm going to get 2 thirds. Between 8 and 24, 8 is a GCF, is the biggest thing that can go into both of these. So 8 divided by 8 is 1, 24 divided by 8 is 3. Now look at these fractions. What do you think the LCD is going to be for those two? Well, they have the same. So the answer is very easily done, if you saw it, 3. For exercise 15, I want you to write these fractions in ascending order. In other words, from smallest to largest. Give it a try. Well, the first thing we need to do is get a common denominator for everything, the LCD. In this case, you look carefully between 6 and 4 and 12 and 3, the answer is 12. So I'm going to rewrite the fractions with denominators of 12. This one, if I want 12 on the bottom, 6 times 2 is 12, so I do 5 times 2 is 10. For the next one, if I want a denominator of 12, 4 times 3 is 12, so I go 3 times 3 is 9. This one stays the same. Yay. Let's work for us. I want 12 down here, so 3 times 4 is 12, so 2 times 4 is 8. And the last one stays as is. Now, we can easily determine which one's the smallest and which one's the largest. Here, the 5 twelfths is the smallest, so that goes with this guy. So he stays the same, so that's going to be 5 twelfths. Next, we have is 7 twelfths. Then we have 8, but we don't write down 8 twelfths, we write the one that corresponds to it right here. So 2 thirds. And then 9 right here, so that's going to be 3 fourths. And then finally, the 10 twelfths is a 5 6. So this right here is my answer.
for exercise number 16, I want you to figure out, is this fraction equivalent to this one? Give it a try. Well, there's actually a couple of ways of doing it. If, you're, if it's okay for you to use a calculator, I would just do the cross multiplications. This times this. Is it equal to this times this? Let's write that out. So, 72 times 255. Is that the same as 108 times 170? Well, if you actually do the multiplication, this is going to give you 18,360. Well, guess what? It's going to be the exact same number for this one. So the answer is going to be yes. Now, let's say you're not allowed to use calculator, you want to work kind of fast. Well, then I would recommend you reduce these fractions. And if you do, with a little bit of effort, it turns out you're going to get two thirds is two thirds, and right away you can tell, yes, they are. Or officially, you can do the cross multiplications, but uh, there's no need for that. But that's a couple of ways of demonstrating that, yes, they are equivalent. Exercise 17. Which of these two fractions is larger? Now this is actually a pretty typical test question on um, many standardized tests, like SATs, ACTs. So use the procedure we learned with the different types of patterns, the pattern one or pattern two. Well here, the denominators are the same, the numerators increased. So what's the rule? If the denominator is the same, as the numerator gets larger, the fraction gets larger. So this one is the larger fraction. If you still get kind of stuck, put values, put numbers in here, make the you know threes and fives or something, and then it's easy to compare. For exercise 18, we're asked which of these fractions has the smaller value. Give it a try. Well, according to our patterns, notice the numerators are the same, but the denominators have a different value. This one's actually bigger. So what's the rule? As my denominators get larger, the fraction value actually gets smaller if the numerators are the same. So this one here is a smaller value. 